Thank you for tuning in to Ashley TV. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at our Pima Series powered processor. Let's start by taking a closer look at the front panel. Here in this section, we have the power switch and status LEDs. The status LEDs indicate the status of power, standby, protect, disable, and communication activity. It is important to note that the communication LED will indicate whether or not the Pima is receiving signal through a network. The channel control area also has status LEDs indicating current and temperature. If the temperature LED is illuminated, it means that the amplifier channel has reached an excessively high operating temperature and will gradually attenuate the signal to compensate. If it is unable to sufficiently cool the channels, the amplifier will eventually go into protect mode. The current LED confirms that the amplifier output is delivered to speaker load. The bridge LED indicates that the channel pairs selected to bridge mode from within Protea software and that only the odd input channel is your active level control. Now let's turn our attention to the rear panel of Pima and walk through this step by step. Beginning on the left hand side, the first thing you will notice is the Ethernet 10100 network connection. If you're not familiar with the entire line of Ashley's digital products, it's important to remember that all of our digital processors and digital amplifiers are networked ready right out of the box with no additional hardware to purchase. Just above that, you'll notice a slot labeled Digital I.O. Here's where a CobraNet or EtherSound card would be installed. Now let's take a look at the 8x8 matrix section, starting with the inputs. There are two buttons to the left of channel 1 and 2. The first one is labeled Phantom Power. By engaging this button, the first four inputs now receive 15 volts of Phantom Power. The next button down labeled TEL PBX switches between mic line and PBX analog input for channel one only. When switched to PBX, a 600 ohm isolation transformer is inserted into the channel one's input signal path. This transformer is designed for limited bandwidth audio from a telephone paging system. Each Pima model also has eight balanced input channels, which are software selectable between microphone or line inputs. Please view other Protea videos on our website for more information about these features. Additionally, there are eight pairs of sum to mono RCA connectors optimized for consumer level devices. In this section, you will notice eight preamplifier auxiliary outputs, which allows you to route signals from the matrix mixer to anywhere your system requires. For example, you can send this signal from channels 1 and 2 to recording devices, 3, 4, and 5 to external amplifiers, and channels 7 and 8 can be used to send the signal to either powered speakers or powered subwoofers. It is important to keep in mind that these auxiliary outputs directly correspond to the speaker outputs that you see here. This means that whatever digital processing levels you have set up for channels 1 through 4 will directly correspond to the speaker outputs. For example, within the Protea software you may have programmed your speaker output channels 1 through 4 to have some EQ, compression, delay, or other signal processing. This processing will also directly correspond to the auxiliary outputs 1 through 4, so routing these to a recording device may not have a desirable effect. However, within Protea you can program auxiliary outputs 5 through 8 with different or no digital processing which might be better suited for recording. For more on programming the Protea software, please refer to other videos posted on the Ashley.com website. Now let's take a look at the speaker outputs. Depending on the model of Pima that you choose, there will either be four powered outputs or eight powered outputs, either 125 watts per channel or 250 watts per channel. For example, if you choose a Pima 4250, you'll have four channels of 250 watts per channel. If you choose an 8125, you will have eight outputs each with 125 watts. Now let's take a closer look at the remote control section of the amplifier. Here's where you can have precise external control of the amplifier functions using any of Ashley's remote control devices, or you can use third-party controllers like AMX or Crestron. Let's take a closer look. First, the remote standby. These two contact closure pins can be wired to switch remotely to place the amplifier in standby mode. Next, we have the preset recall. 
These four pins can be wired to remote contact closure switches to recall one of the first four amplifier stored presets. An ideal choice for this would be our WR2 remote control. Next we have the data section. These four pins offer serial data control and can be wired to Ashley remote control devices such as the and our RD8C, which is a desktop or wall remote control device using an XLR data connector. Ashley also offers an inline converter that allows the data port to be used with other RS-232 controllers. Finally, we have the remote level control section. These pins can be wired to individual 10K potentiometers, such as the Ashley WR1, for individual level control of each channel. Well, that concludes our overview of our Pima series product. For more detailed information about the features and programming of Pima using our Protea software, please visit our website at www.ashley.com. Thank you for your continued support of Ashley Audio.